Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Shwini here and this is my channel. You can just go ahead and search in YouTube and to subscribe to it and hit the bell to get notifications. So here I'll be teaching a lot of free videos on Java, Selenium, Python, robotic process automation, API automation and even you'll be getting a playlist on interview questions as well. So today we're going to look at the topic of functions in Python. So if you are new to this channel, I will strongly recommend go ahead and subscribe to it. So let's get started on the practical part. So we, often we come across these different terminologies in Python and we don't know what are they and you know we get sometimes confused if they're related to some other programming languages like Java. So I'll be clearly giving you the differences between the two, how we write in Java, how we write in Python and how simpler it is to write in Python we will be looking at in this particular tutorial session. So let's get started. So just to show you an example how we write in Java is that we write it in this way, right? public void and then we give some method name, let's say define val, right? This is how we give a method definition in Java. So definition, when I say we are always having an opening and a closing curly braces, right? This is the access modifier, this is the return type, this is the method name followed by the parentheses. And we may or may not have any parameter. It depends upon the type of method we are trying to create in Java. And this will depict the data type, right? For the variables A and B. So let's just for now comment it out, right? So how do we give comments in Python? Just use the multi-line comments of three apostrophe and just enclose it with that, right? So let's get started with the definition of methods in Python. So we have to use a keyword called DEF. Give the method name. No need to worry about the return type or give any value at all. Just say display val. I'm just taking a simple method name. And as we close the parenthesis, we have to give a colon here. Just press enter and it will give by default four spaces. That's the default indentation rule in Python that we have to give four spaces at the start of the next line, right? If it's a, at a different level, because this is the method definition level and we have changed the level to a statement level within the method or the statement blocks, right? So let's just create a simple method first to understand how it is written, right? We love Python programming. So this is a simple program I'm having in Python. Right. So we just want to print this particular value and let's see how it does that, right? So that's all about de defining a method in Python. Now, how are we going to call this particular method? It's pretty simple. In Java, how we used to do? The methods would be belonging to a particular class. We'll create the object of the class, etc. right? Let's say if we had a class, right? Let's say class objects if we had a class like that and if we had basically a method which belonged to that like how we had written there right public void m1 let's say this is the method defined within the class so if we want to call m1 inside some main method there will be a main method right and this is where we are going to so we would have be having a main method in your java right this is how we used to write And we just have, we'll be calling the object, right? We'll be creating the object of the class and then we'll be accessing the method, right? This is how we used to do it in Java. First, we would be creating the object. So this is the multiple steps we had to use in Java. And then we used to invoke the method name, right? This way. So this is how complicated it was in Java where you had to follow so many multiple steps and then we have to always use the curly braces in between, right? So rather than doing all of this part, Python makes it very simple, right? Python says don't no need to do all of those kind of things. You can call me standalone as well. No need to always have me as a part of a class. What you could do is just you could call me directly. So it just allows us to write display val and just no need to have semicolon as well because it's python we don't need to have a semicolon at the end of the statement and that's all when we run this program you would be able to see that this output gets displayed so let's run this program so here we go we love python programming don't we so let's continue from here so let's go one step further now how do we parameterize the value like how we had in java right how do we parameterize the value nothing to worry we just have to give the variable name we don't have to mention anything about the data type, etc. And let's just um, say we want to print the values, right? 
so i'm going to use a i'm going to use the comma operator to separate multiple right multiple uh, variables right so we'll be separating it by this comma so as we have in java likewise in python instead of concatenation operator plus we are going to use comma so that is the difference we have to note right and we are going to mention okay a is what right a is this value which a which is being passed again use comma instead of plus sign right use b and then again use comma and then say b that's all so that's all we need to have for this particular method right we are just creating a simple method to just understand how it is written now here comes the important part i am explaining this python from the scratch for this methods concept right so we have to understand how this method and everything operates so here we are having two parameters a and b right so i have to ideally pass two parameters right if i don't pass two parameter it will not be able to identify so let's see what happens if we don't pass any parameter for a parameterized method if you don't pass let's see what happens look at this it gives us the error and what is the error it gives it says you are missing out two required positional arguments a and b so it is expecting two required arguments a and b which is not being passed what if if i pass just one value still it will be throwing error right because it's a required argument see it still is missing one required argument which is b so i have to mandatorily pass two parameters right this is basically called as required arguments in python means at the time of method calling whatever arguments you are having you need to pass the exact number as it's defined in the method otherwise it is going to throw you errors this is the first type of arguments which we are going to see in python which is called as required arguments right i hope this concept is pretty clear let's go one step further right so here we have one more type of parameter in python which is called as default arguments so it could be the case that we may have some parameter already having some value let's say a is 2 right so here if i don't pass a if i just say 2 then what is supposed to happen b is should be getting that particular value because you have not passed the parameter a right so let's run it and see no but still it will give you error because it says non default argument follows default default argument so what it is trying to say is that your non default argument will come always after your default argument that means i still would have to pass two parameters so i can say 3 comma 2 okay and what we are going to do here let's run this program now so it gives us error right so what is the meaning of this error we should be able to understand what is the meaning of this error right so this says that there is a syntax error at this particular line just see which line number it talks about it talks about this definition line it says non default argument follows default argument which is not correct so always remember that whenever you are defining any optional argument right this has to come later it cannot come before it has to come later than your non default argument so this is called as default argument so non default argument should always come your first as parameter so when i pass the value if i skip out some parameter like if i don't pass instead of 2 if i pass only one parameter here this will always by default map to b it will not map to a because a is having a default value so these are nothing but called as default arguments right in the method definition so when i run this program now you can see that we have got a equal to 2 and b equal to 1 so this was the second type which is the default argument right now let's look at the third type which is called as keyword arguments right and there is one more type which is variable link arguments right so these are the four different types of arguments which could be passed for methods we have already looked at required arguments which is the mandatory set of arguments to be passed we have looked at the default arguments where we can have a default value for argument so even if you don't pass a value for 2 that is for a it will just take the value which is where is given by default let's say if i pass a value like 4 so it's going to follow the same sequence what we have defined for the method b followed by a so value of a which is 2 will be overridden by your value 4 so let's run this program and have a look so there you go a is 4 and b is 1 so now let's look at what are called as keyword arguments 
so keyword arguments means that at the time of calling the method itself we can define what particular variable is having what value so i can say here a equal to 1 right and i can say b equal to 4 right so this particular sequence is possible so this particular sequence is possible to give we can have a different sequence but we should be defining what particular variable is having what value so that is what keyword arguments are all about right so now let's run this particular program and here we go we have value of a which was 2 is getting overridden by the value as 1 and b is having a value as 4 so these were the three arguments you have seen so far now the fourth type of argument are called as the variable length arguments right so what are variable length arguments so for that let's do one thing let's create a separate method right and let's call it as star values right so whenever we are having more than one value right display values we can say so we can if in, whenever we are basically having a situation in our project that we are not knowing in advance actually that how many number of parameters could be a part of the method calling then we can simply use the concept of tuples here so i'll be covering this tuples concept just don't worry about that it will be part of our next lecture for sure. So in tuples, what happens is that we would be representing multiple values, basically, through this representation. Multiple values will be comma separated and they'll be stored like that. It's kind of a list representation, actually, right? So we would be having all the values here, like comma separated. So just imagine that we are having this particular value like a tuple. So at the time of method calling, I may pass one parameter, I may pass two parameters, the flexibility Python provides us that we can pass any number of parameters and this star values will be able to hold it. So let's just see what will be the output here, how we are going to do that, right? So let's just say that um, we want to print the values, right? So let's just say going to print values. So we will have to use a loop here because if we have more than one value, we'll have to use a loop, right? So I would say for var variable let's say variables let's say variable val in values right we're going to use print method and we are going to just print the variable val that will be all what we want to do right we want to pass multiple values and it should be able to store all of them and we are going to iterate over the for loop and just print the values one by one so let's look at that and let's call this particular method now so we have come outside this indentation part. Now we are at the same level as we are having the method definition, DEF. We'll just have to say display values and let's pass maybe no values. Let's see what happens in that case. Yeah, let's run it. You look at that. We did not get any particular output because there is nothing to iterate over because we did not pass any parameter. We can pass just one parameter now. Let's run it again. See, it's printed one. I can pass maybe some other value. I just pass Srini. See, it's a tuple. It will store multiple data type. It's not necessarily going to store only one data type. I can pass maybe a character. Let's run it. See, right. So this is how you're going to have, you can also have two, right? Two Boolean value. You can have any data type what you want. So this will be treated like a tuple. You will to store the values like a tuple in the method parameter. So this is the variable length argument. Now you could also have one more method. Let me show you one example. You could have one more method where you can have a mix of your required argument and your keyword arguments. Let's say we are having that kind of a scenario. A comma B, right? And uh, let's say print A is similar to our previous example, and B is let's take the value of B, right? So this is how we are having this lines of code. Now, if you want to call the value, right, let me rename this value to displays values two. Right? We are having two parameters A and B, and we are going to print it. Let's just say this particular method. Right. Now, what you're going to do, we are going to have a combination of required and 
keyword arguments first. So let's see what is the impact. If you are using both of them together, how is the impact? So when I say required and keyword, I could have multiple parameters. So let's say I'm having, let's say three parameters. Let's understand this concept thoroughly. Right. Now, if I'm passing the mix of required as well as keyword, what could be the sequence? How we can pass the value? That should be the question which should come up in our mind, right? If I go ahead with this kind of approach, understand this particular thing. If I say 34, fine. And I'm not giving any data type here because it will store dynamically. That's fine. I'm not going to do any addition or something like that. Let's say I'm giving streaming. Okay. And here I'm saying C equal to C. That's it. So this is a combination of your required parameters first, followed by keyword arguments, right? Because these two are your required arguments. Then you are having your keyword argument. Let's see what happens here. It's going to work fine. Look at this. It's able to store the value properly. But as the moment I make this as your, you know, if I make this particular variable, let's say I make this particular variable as A equal to 34. So this becomes my keyword argument. This also becomes my keyword argument. This becomes my required argument, right? Because I'm not having any initialization done on the left hand side. But Python doesn't support this kind of a behavior. It says you should always have your keyword argument first, followed by all of your required arguments. Sorry, I'm uh, other way around, right? So it says that you should always have your required arguments first, followed by all of your keyword arguments. You cannot have a mix and match of both in such a case that first you are having or you are not having, you know, keyword argument, required argument at the first. You should always have required argument at the first because it expects that once you are having, let's say, a keyword argument defined like this A equal to 34, it will expect all the following values to also be a keyword argument. It will not allow any required argument to be there. It will throw you error at runtime. So let's look at that. Let's run this program. See, it just says clearly that this is not proper. Positional argument follows keyword argument, right? So here, keyword argument means this one, and positional argument means this one, right? So it's saying that this is your syntax error. Your positional argument is currently following your keyword argument. It is the error it's talking about and you have to correct the sequence, right? So how are we going to correct it? Simple, just change the sequence here. And now this becomes your required parameter and these two become your positional parameter. So this will then go to B, right? B will store the value of this value, which is training. Let's run this program now. Okay, so what it is the error it's giving? Let's understand it. It's saying display values to got multiple values for argument A. Right, because we are using positional argument here, right? This particular argument is a positional argument, so it's getting mapped to A. But you should have made this as B rather than, or you could make it C also. And you can make this as B. You can change, interchange the sequence for the other parameter. But the parameter at the first should match to your variable, right? If you're giving your positional parameter, this will always map to A. And we just had a typo here. Now we have renamed it accordingly. So C followed by B. So this will map according to the values here, B and C. So you'll be getting the values as A Srini, B will be C and C will be 34. So let's run this now again. So here we go. So these are the different ways how we can, you know, pass the arguments to methods in Python. Now let's look at few things more, right? Let's look into the scope of the method. So we're going to look at the concept of scope of methods, right? So what is the scope of method here, right? So let's understand it. So scope of method means uh, whatever we are defining, let's say I'm saying define func one, right? A method here. And I'm using the variable, let's say, uh, str equal to hello. Fine. Using str equal to hello. I'm using print method. I'm using the value. Right. This is the scope of the method. So let's do one thing. Let's just create a method and we are going to look at this concept now. Right. So let's create a method which will be able to, you know, 
take the inputs and then determine okay what is going to be the output so we're going to see the demonstration of call by reference here right so the values are being passed by reference that's what we're going to look at that so let's see that here some values list right so let's say that we have a list here it's list one right? and what you're going to do here we are just going to have a list one defined outside let's say it's having 50 it's having 43 which is 21 there are some values we have given to that right and let's call this particular method some values list passing list one right so this is the list what we've given yeah so there is some indentation we want to expect yeah but we will take care of that so we want to give some indentation here and we want to define what is there within method now within method what i'll do is that first i will just print what's inside this list already right list one is having the value and we're going to print this list one right now we will just append it we'll just have some changes done to list one let's append the values so let's append 21 right and let's append one more value let's say 10 again right so we're just having these values appended and now what we're going to do is that we are again going to print the list so that once we know we have come inside the method the so list one after changes inside this particular method what is the value we are going to print out and what we're going to do after we have come outside the method let's try to see what is the value so that we will have an idea if there are any changes done to the method or not to this particular list one or not right so list one is currently having these four values inside the method we are modifying by adding two more to the set to the list actually and once we are coming out of the method call we are trying to check what is the value of list one so let's run this program you can see that both of them are exactly same because in python the object is passed by reference not by value so whatever modifications you do within the method will also be reflected in on the actual variable which is list one here right so now as an exception to that would be an example of strings actually because strings are immutable right they are not mutable so strings are immutable so rather than changing the string they will basically lead to the new creation of strings right so new string we create a method right and i'll just say str likewise how we are doing here i'll say str equal to str plus hello all right and we will print str inside new string method right and we are going to print the value now outside the particular method we are going to call this new string right and here we are going to pass so we are going to pass the value of string here let's say str is equal to i that's all we had the value now when we are calling this particular method we will pass the str value right and let's try to print it out outside the method and see what's the value being obtained so this is inside the new string and this is outside the new string method so when you look at this what's happening inside the method i am trying to append string with hello right so inside the new string method it will have the modified value but it will not impact the actual str value the reason is because you are basically going to okay this is reserved built-in keyword so better we can change it to str1 because it's giving us a warning symbol this is str1 right yeah so the reason it will not impact this str1 is because strings are immutable so when we are doing high plus hello it is going to create a new string high hello and that will be a separate object altogether it's not going to modify your str1 that is why strings are immutable and they are least impacted by such kind of operations because they are immutable so that will just lead to new creation of strings so let's run this program and there we go so inside the method it's showing hi hello and outside it is hi 
so that was all about methods and we will look into the next session some other key concepts in python so hope you like this session do subscribe to my channel if you haven't done yet and do share with your friends